Welcome, my friends, to the Bob and Brad podcast. My name is Mike Keenitz, and I am a PT assistant. Today, I will be interviewing Jordan on the effects food has on your blood sugar. Jordan has a bachelor's in exercise science, a master's in nutrition, and she is also a certified personal trainer. You may recognize her from doing the follow along exercise videos on our channel as well. So without further ado, here is Jordan. All right. Welcome back to the podcast, Jordan. Hey, thanks, Mike. Today, we are going to talk about the effects food has on your blood sugar. So the first question I have is we're going to start with the simple question, what exactly is blood sugar and how does it work in your body? All right. That's probably a good place to start. Um, So we shouldn't go ahead assuming people even know what blood sugar means. Um, So I don't I'm not into talking super sciencey. Like when we have the conversation of blood sugar, sometimes it can get a little bit. So I want to try to keep this on the lighter side um, so that I don't bore everybody like we're in a college lecture room. So that's my goal anyways. So stop me if I'm getting What too, if I like college lectures? Getting too deep. Well, I mean. I'm just kidding. Then, Go ahead. Yeah. So I'm going to try. I'm going to try to kind of, for lack of a better word, dumb it down a little bit and keep it a little bit more exciting. Um, but anyway, so blood sugar. Let's just start um, kind of simple and break it down a little bit. So basically when we eat carbohydrates coming from our diet, um, they become sugar in the blood. Okay. Specifically, they turn into glucose. Um, Glucose then kind of travels through our bloodstream and that's referred to as our blood sugar, right? So here's the thing though. um, Our body can't handle a ton of sugar in the blood at a time. We can't just eat as many carbs as we want, and then it can just hang out there as sugar in the blood. So we have mechanisms in our body to kind of get rid of excess. So um, kind of a fun fact, your body can only handle about a teaspoon of sugar in the bloodstream at any given time. Um, So we have to control this. Um, So what happens is our blood sugar is kind of regulated by different hormones. So if we have too much um, insulin comes in, I'm sure everybody's heard of insulin at least, but that's what its role is. It's basically we have too much sugar in the blood. So insulin comes in to try to get it out of the bloodstream. Um, And then we have other hormones that if our blood sugar dips too low, um, cortisol and glucagon are actually other hormones that help to raise it. So we have these mechanisms that kind of keep blood sugar at bay or at normal levels, if you will. Um, So, you know, the thing is we need sugar in our blood. It's not like we can't have, we can't have any. So our body can handle, can handle some. Um, The problem is, um, which I feel like this same conversation comes up in anything we talk about food, but we're getting too much, right? It's no mystery. Like we are a nation of very unhealthy individuals eating way too much sugar. So um, it's kind of a side tangent, but I just, when I was kind of doing some research for the podcast um, to create some content for this, I came across a couple stats on um, how much sugar we're actually eating because I do think it relates to this. Um, but we are eating like 100 times more sugar per year per person than we were like 150 years ago. Um, this is even more powerful. The average American 150 years ago was having about two pounds of sugar per year. Now it's like over 200 pounds. <laughs> Isn't that disgusting? I uh, Yeah, I know it's a lot. I mean, a lot of it's yeah. processed food and just availability of it. But yeah compared yeah. to back then. And we'll, we'll probably touch on that later with some other questions, but basically kind of to sum up that question, blood sugar is simply like you eat carbohydrates or sugar, whatever, either, or it, and that's what your blood sugar is then. Right. And, and there, I, there is an interesting statistic out there that one third of the U S is diabetic or pre-diabetic now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and that's why, I mean, we're consuming way more sugar. Right. So let's talk about what foods have the biggest impact on blood sugar. I know you said carbohydrates, but you want to get more in depth on it? Sure. Yeah. So I'm going to start with the, what I would feel more obvious ones. Um, I want to touch on them because I think it's important people are aware of this. Um, But then I'm going to go into some not so obvious ones that'll probably shock people a little bit. But um, so foods that have the biggest impact on blood sugar, obvious ones, um, soda, stop drinking it. (laughs) It's just basically, I would say that's one of the, gosh, one of the worst things. Um, Actually juice too. Um, That actually might shock people. So maybe I'll save that one. Um, Let's save the, the, 
uh, juice conversation, sports drinks, um, candy, um, pure sugar. Uh, so the not so obvious ones are going to be, um, so juice, let me talk about that. I'll circle back to that right away. So a lot of times people think, well, if it's hundred percent juice, right, that's fine. Um, the problem is juice, we're stripping out all of the fiber from it. So what happens, and we're going to talk about this again in a later question, but it's just causing this big blood sugar rust. There's no fiber or anything to slow down the digestion. So it just spikes the blood sugar up much like, you know, a Mountain Dew does. Right. Um, arguably hardly better, maybe slightly because it doesn't have all the toxic dyes and things like that. But as far as um, the impact it has on your blood sugar, it's huge. Um, other things that have a um, pretty large impact are going to be um, any kind of bread, um, pasta, rice, um, especially when you eat those things alone. Um, energy bars actually are like uh, a top one, we think healthy, grab a cliff bar, mm -hmm. huge blood sugar spike because they're um, void of a lot of protein or healthy fats. They're just chocked full of sugar and carbohydrates. Um, and actually I can't have this conversation without touching on, I don't want to demonize fruits and vegetables. That's not my point. Cause we're going to get into how you eat fruits and vegetables, but how you can do it in a better way. Mm -hmm. Um, but things like starchy vegetables, potatoes, even sweet potatoes, squash. Well, yes, they have a place in the diet. If you just eat them by themselves, they're going to spike your blood sugar. Um, right. Carbohydrates without fats and proteins is going to yes. spike your blood sugar way more than if you're eating all together. 100%. Yeah, that's, that, and that's going to be kind of key with a lot of what we're going to talk about today is how we can, you know, pair things together. It's not that those foods are inherently bad. It's when we are consuming them all by themselves. Um, even things, you know, fruit too. Um, bananas are really high one. Grapes, huge impact on blood sugar, blood glucose levels. Um, uh, what did I miss? Apples, um, somewhat, not as much as like banana or grapes, um, corn, it's a big one too. So yeah. I'm not hitting all of it, but those are some of the main contenders and your obvious processed sugary foods. I feel like it can go without saying on that one. We all know if we eat a bowl of ice cream, it's probably not <laughs> great. Or no, sugar. probably not. Most ice creams, high fructose corn syrup now anyway. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's void of fats if it's low fat so it technically spikes your insulin even more but yeah yeah